I'm Kasturi De. Good morning. I'm speaking on Class Six ICC Chapter Respiratory System. Now respiration. Every cell of a plant or an animal or our own body requires energy for various activities. For example, the muscle cell contract for movement. The brain cells receive and send messages. The root cells penetrate into the soil and absorbs water, minerals, nutrients, and so on. When we sleep, we need energy. For all these activities, we need energy. We get this energy through a process known as respiration. What is respiration? It's the process of releasing energy by breaking down food that is glucose which is needed for various activities of the body. The breakdown of glucose occurs by utilizing oxygen which we breathe in along with air. During this process the food is oxidized or burned to release energy. Now respiration which is the process of releasing energy this is of two types aerobic and anaerobic aerobic utilizes oxygen anaerobic does not utilize oxygen in aerobic produces more oxygen here produces less oxygen anaerobic aerobic takes place in mitochondria anaerobic respiration takes place in cell cytoplasm aerobic respiration common in all multicellular organisms like animals plants human beings etc and anaerobic respiration is common in unicellular organisms like protozoa fungi bacteria etc now the respiration in humans For the respiration in humans, the organs involved are the nose, the pharynx, the larynx, trachea, bronchi and the lungs. Okay. The six types of organs are involved in the respiration, respiratory system of human organs. Humans. Now the first comes the nose. It's the point of entry from air for air into the body. It has two openings that is nostrils each leading into a nasal chamber. Nostrils have a hairy lining to prevent dust particles from reaching into the lungs. The lining of the nasal chamber has mucus. What is a mucus? It's a sticky fluid which also traps the germs and dust. Okay. In the nostrils, then the nostrils have hairy lining as well as the mucus fluid which traps the germs, the dust particles, etc. The nasal chamber warms and moistures, moistens the air entering into the lungs. So we should always breathe through the nose and not through the mouth. Because when we breathe through the mouth, there is no hairy lining and neither the mucus which could prevent the germs and dust from entering into our body. The inner lining of the nose also has some special cells for smell. Then comes the pharynx. From the nose, the air passes behind the mouth into the pharynx or throat. It's a common passage for air and food. From here, the air passes into the windpipe or the air tube or it's called trachea. The larynx. Third is the larynx. At the entrance of the trachea, there is a voice box called the larynx. It contains two ligament folds called vocal cords. Air expelled forcibly through the vocal cords vibrate them to produce sound. The front opening that is the glottis of the windpipe is guarded by a muscular flap called epiglottis. The epiglottis closes the windpipe at the time of swallowing the food.
Incomplete closure by the epiglottis during swallowing causes coughing as the food wrongly enters the windpipe. Okay. If we, it's, the epiglottis does not close properly, the glottis portion, then the food enters into the windpipe and we get coughing. So, this is the picture of the wind passage. This is the nostril. This is the food, this is the mouth from which the food enters and this is the nostril region from where the wind enters. These are the nasal cavity. This is the hard palate. This wind passes from here to the, this is the pharynx region. Uh, yes, and then it comes the larynx, voice box. This is the pharynx region. This is the epiglottis which covers the pharynx region where before entering into the, uh, uh, if the food, uh, before entering the food, if the food and the, these two are the same passage it enters, if this is the food item and these, when they, uh, when this enters the food, when the food enters, this epiglottis closes the windpipe and the food goes into the trachea. A uh, food goes into the food pipe and the wind goes into the trachea. This is the gullet, this is the food pipe and this is the trachea. Here is the voice box, the larynx. Okay. This is the glottis covering. It's the food. The food is getting inside from here. The food is going to the food pipe and the epiglottis here is closed. Then comes the trachea or the windpipe. It emerges from the larynx down below in the neck, runs in the middle of the chest up to a short distance between the two lungs. Between the two lungs, it divides into two branches. The trachea divides into two branches known as bronchi. The walls of the trachea are strengthened by c sepid rings of cartilage to prevent it from collapsing. Bronchi, the two bronchi lead into the right and the left lungs respectively. Each bronchus is further divided into smaller and smaller branches called bronchioles. The inner lining of the trachea, bronchi and bronchioles have ciliated epithelium. The continuous movement of the cilia pushes out the unwanted particles that may be present in the inhaled air. Each lung contains millions of alveoli. Singular, it's alveolus. These alveoli are microscopic air sacs present at the end of the bronchioles. These are richly supplied with blood capillaries covering their walls. The walls of the alveoli are extremely thin and moist for allowing faster diffusion of gases. Okay, then we come to lungs. It's a pair of, pair of pink and spongy elastic organ protected by the rib cage. The left one is slightly smaller with two lobes and accommodate heart in between. The right one has three lobes. Rest on, it rests on the diaphragm. It, what is a diaphragm? It's a muscular sheet which internally divides the body cavity into two parts, the chest cavity and the thoracic cavity. And uh, chest, chest cavity or the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. The chest cavity is also known as thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. Diaphragm separates this too. And on the diaphragm lies the lungs. It's protected from outside by two membranes, outer pleura and inner pleura. Outer pleura is known as parietal pleura and inner pleura is visceral pleura. The space between the two pleuras is filled with a fluid called pleural effusion. The fluid acts as a shock absorber and so protects the lungs. This is the, lung, inside the lungs, these are the alveolar sac. This is the bronchi, bronchioles which enter into the alveolar sacs. These are the alveoli and they look like inner side. These are with ciliated epithelium. Okay. 
capillary network is there on the alveoli the okay now this we come to the end of the structure of the uh, respiratory organs we'll come to uh, in the next video with the functions of the respiratory organs that is the lungs and other organs okay and this is the end of the first portion thank you